Hello, I'm Andrew Hearn, your Vice President of Standards here at GS1's Global Office. I'm here to welcome you to our second Virtual Standards Week, where we focus on the standards being developed within our Global Standards Management Process, also known as GSMP. It's hard to believe that it's been a year since we needed to change from our typical physical event to a virtual one. And when we did, we almost doubled attendance. And now for this meeting, we're doing even better, thanks to your participation. Now this increase in reach from all over the world is the main reason that we are starting our sessions earlier than our normal standards meetings. Our goal is always to find the best time that works for as many attendees as possible, but sometimes that's not always possible. And we'd like to thank everyone who's either up early or maybe staying up late to take part. Your participation is really important. If anything, this past year has shown the resilience of you, the people who bring our GS1 standards to life through being engaged in the global standards management process. You probably don't know this, but overall, your participation in our standards teams has actually grown this year. GSMP membership is up over 15%. And on average, we have 30 standards meetings a month that attracts over 850 attendees to those meetings. To me, this reflects that the digital transformation that is going on around the world shows that the world needs GS1 now more than ever. And it's with your help that we can move forward and grow even stronger. For those of you who are attending this event for the first time, and actually about a third of you are attending for the first time, welcome. If you did not know, this is the place where your voice can be heard and it will make a difference. If you think about it, where else can you go where you can directly influence how industry operates around the world? Whether that be in defining attributes about a product, enhancing the means of exchanging data, enabling some new functionality that businesses can use to enable new processes and work better together, it's all here for you this week. The sessions this week are different from any other online conference you may be attending. And I know I've been to a few of them. This week is focused on working meetings so that we can drive our standards forward and solve real world business problems. To help you better understand all that we have going on this week, in a few minutes, you'll hear from some of our leaders of the different sessions, and they will help you with a good overview of what the teams are working on. You may see something interesting and new that you may be interested in joining, but don't let yourself get lost in the details. As you attend these meetings, don't forget what this is all about. It's all about solving problems, making things easier, more efficient, actually better. That is what you do here. And not just this week, but on every conference call and every GSMP Zoom meeting that you attend. This is the spirit of GSMP that you often hear about when you talk to people who have taken part for a while. And if this is your first time joining us, please keep your eyes open for those moments where people from around the world come together and reach an agreement. They solve a difficult problem they couldn't have done on their own. It is in that moment that GSMP truly comes alive and it doesn't matter whether that is in person or in Zoom, the GSMP spirit always comes through. For me, it's because of those moments that I'm still here. I've been here in and around GSMP for over 19 years, and I still love it. And I know that there are many others out there who feel the same because they see these moments, and I'm certain that they're going to happen this week, as long as you keep your eyes open for them. Yeah. Someone else who shares the passion for GS1 and GSMP is our Chief Product Officer, Robert Vitamin, who's up next. So with that, let me pass it over to Robert. So over to you, Robert. Thanks, Andrew. On behalf of GS1 and our Board Committee for Standards, hello and welcome to Standards Week. I'm Robert Vitamin, and I'm honored to be a part of opening our event today. It's great to see so many familiar names logging in from countries all around the world. Uh, to those of you out there that are joining us for the first time, welcome. And to those of you that have been around here for a while, thank you for continuing to be a vital part of our community. With all that's going on out in the world today, we're honored that you're choosing to devote some of your time and energy to this week. And while of course we'd prefer to be together in person, uh, I'm excited about this format, knowing that we've all learned a lot about virtual sessions over the last year. I guess that it's fair to say we all learned a lot about many things over this last year. Uh, remote work has created new challenges and new opportunities. And, and for the industries that we serve here at GS1, this last year has really shined a light on the need 
for preparation, resilience, and flexibility. And in consideration of what's happened over these last 12 months, one of the things that we at GS1 prioritized toward the end of 2020 and now into 2021 was reviewing and refining our operational plan in consideration of the changing needs of those industries that we serve. As a result, we recently refined the five global priorities that we're committed to. Uh, number one, supporting post-COVID-19 industry needs with optimized operations here at the global office. Uh, number two, we're doubling down on identification projects to achieve both increased GTIN integrity and ubiquity in service of an accelerating digital economy. Third, we're rolling out quality data sharing initiatives because bad data is just bad for everyone. Fourth, we're continuing to strengthen our competencies and our, our organizational culture so we can be uh, the best federation we possibly can be. And last, and maybe most importantly to, to this community, we're launching a significant program to add an entirely new dimension in barcoding. Now I'll talk a bit more about what this all means later on in the opening session. For now, let's get focused on the sessions of the week. So, okay, this week is all about standards development. All of the work that you'll do over the course of the week will help the GS1 system to be better able to serve the needs of industry. Indeed, all of our working groups this week, whether we're talking about uh, EPCIS 2.0, GLN modernization, EPC modernization, digital signatures, scan for transport, the global data model, our EDI semantic work, uh, our GDSN user group, who am I missing? Ah, all our SMGs, the EDI SMG, the images, digital and electronics assets SMG, the ID SMG, and the GPC SMG. All of your work is aligned with our overarching plans. So thank you in advance. Um, thank you for your commitment to GS1 standards, for sharing your time, your knowledge, and your energy with our communities. Um, and now we're going to hear from all our standards development team leaders about each of the sessions of the week, starting with, I think, Greg Rowe. Um, yeah, over to you, Greg. Thank you, Robert, and hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Greg Rowe, Standards Development Leader and Facilitator for the GLN Modernization and EPC-related mission-specific workgroups. I'm excited to provide you an overview of my upcoming sessions this week. First, a GLN Modernization Mission-Specific Workgroup. GLN is a key used to identify parties and locations throughout the supply chain. As the industry's use of GLN continues to grow, so does the need to keep the standard up to date. And the GLN MSWG has been doing just that. Over the past six plus months, the group has updated the GLN allocation rules and created a standardized data model based on unique identification. The group is composed of two subteams, reuse and rules and data model. The reuse and rules team updated the GLN allocation rules as well as GLN in the GS1 general specifications via a GenSpec change notification, or as we like to call it, a GSCN. The data model team developed a standardized set of attributes that ensure a foundation for quality data that can be shared across systems. To date, the GLN allocation rules went through community review and the team is now in the process of resolving comments and resolutions. The data model team is finalizing the solution document for data model and the GLN GSCN. So please join us on Wednesday as the team works to finalize both the data model solution and the GLN GSCN. Next is the EPCIS related mission specific work groups. EPCIS enables trading partners to share information about the physical movement and status of product as they travel through the supply chain. It helps answers what, where, when, and why questions about the product. There are three EPC related mission specific work groups, the existing EPCIS 2.0 CPV and two new ones, TDS TDT 2.0 and EPC and UHF Gen 2 V3. The EPCIS 2.0 team has been updating existing standards to meet industry needs and ensure they remain relevant for the future. The two new mission specific work groups will be working to simplify encoding and optimize data capture to ease adoption of EPC RFID 
for trading partners, as well as updating EPC tag data and EPC RFID standards. To date, the EPCIS 2.0 members have been and continue to update the two standards and are in the process of finalizing them before they go to public community review. And the two new MSWGs will have their kickoff calls this week. So please join the EPCIS team on Tuesday as they work to finalize the information. Also join the TDS team on Wednesday and the EPC UHF team on Thursday. So now over to my colleague, John Yu. Take it away, John. Thank you, Greg. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our global friends. My name is John Yu, based here in New Jersey, US offices. As facilitator of several groups, I am fortunate and excited to introduce three sessions during this virtual standards event on behalf of the team. Hope to see you at one of the sessions to share your knowledge and represent the voice of your organization. Let's start with IDSMG. We are a pool of experts processing simple work requests for AIDC and EPC RFID. IDSMG is probably best known for the general specifications, which is our foundational standard describing how GS1 barcodes and identification keys should be used. GenSpecs has been released every year in January, which includes a highly attended webinar for our ML community. Some of the highlights were, Scan for transport AI to enable interoperability amongst transport operators. Expanded the use of global model number to all sectors. Include the use of GS1 digital link URI syntax for consumer mobile devices. Submit your work request for version 22. Digitalization has been a focus for GS1. To help with those efforts, there has been three new sub teams. Future state AIDC application standard profile will be creating the structure to simplify the gen specs. Two healthcare related items have sub team has been created as well. We are exploring and brainstorming ideas to enhance the GS1 general specification to continue the path of being the most downloaded standard. So Dan Mullen will share tier one changes to section five. David Buckley will share suggested removal of section six, symbol placement guideline and share its new home. Help us reach the goal to have a gen spec and full HTML. Join us Tuesday, 25th of May, 1330 Central European time. Scan for transport is a multi-phase work effort. Three phases. So phase one was completed and provides transport and logistics industry, new set of AIs to enable interoperability amongst transport operators using GS1 standards when encoding address and delivery information in GS1 data carriers. We are currently in phase two, actively engaged with pilot participants to complete in July. Phase three will start in September. This group has a distinction as a recipient of the ASCLA 2020 International Supply Chain Award held by the Supply Chain and Logistics Association of Australia. This award is a reflection of the significant contribution everyone involved has made to enable improvements in efficiency, interoperability, visibility, and resilience in the global supply chain. We wanted to thank the pilot participants for their time, resources, and expertise in completing the pilot and providing pilot results. Join us to find out more about the, what was tested. Based on pilot results, we want to share those updates to the scan for transfer implementation guideline and ultimately seek a motion to community review and start discussions on phase three on forward-looking digital link approach. Join us 26th of May, 1200 Central European time. Digital signature. This group will leverage existing GS1 standards such as serialized GS1 identifiers, global data model, and event data to provide a common approach to digital signature for traceability and enter counterfeit business application. What are we addressing? Counterfeiting is a growing problem, demand damaging the global economy. 500 billion of counterfeit goods being traded internationally, increase of regulations on national and regional levels, various approaches and differing emerging solutions, solutions are being proposed to combat counterfeiting, diversions and illicit trade. The diversion approaches and solutions pose a risk of adding complexity and cost to the supply chain they also conflict with GS1 standards and standard-based implementation. 
We approved the BRAD in November of 2020. And digital signature is technical in nature. And to help remove the complexity, the digital signature experts created a demonstration tool to visualize the solution in a simple manner. This is a great opportunity for members to make a difference and shape the solution. Come to learn more and help develop a GS1 standard solution approach. Participate in a demonstration led by one of our experts and suggest enhancements about which data needs to be digitally signed or which other security markings you want to be able to include or support. Join us Wednesday, 26th of May, 1445 Central European time. Thank you for your attention. And off to you, Tasha. Take care, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Tasha Wea, the Standards Development Leader for the Global Data Model Global Team. Our members maintain the Global Data Model Standard, which defines a consistent set of foundational product attributes to simplify data exchange. Our 150 members enhance and maintain the model and oversee complementary standards, such as the attribute definitions for business and the attribute implementation guide. Recent successes include a new version of the global data model standard, global and regional attributes for food, near food, pet, alcohol, and tobacco. Also, an enhanced version of the attribute definitions for business, a standard that delivers business-friendly names, definitions, examples, and usage statements for attributes. Also, attribute implementation guidance on the use of global data model attributes. For example, guidance around hierarchy and packaging attributes. There are other groups too. How, do, how attributes work together. Business examples and use cases using attributes. If you haven't seen it, we invite you to take a look. Finally, the Global Data Model Global Team oversees the expansion of our standard to make way for national layers as more local groups join the Global Data Model Initiative. Next steps for the Global Data Model Global Workgroup are to finalize the attribute implementation guidance, continue to work on the local layers as they establish their national models, and to provide continued oversight to maintain the standard. During this week's session, there will be guest speakers discussing local layer sharing, technologists demonstrating the latest available tools for accessing the standard, and finally, global office experts discussing new trends such as attribute clustering. So be well membership. I look forward to our continued work and I'll turn you over to our next presenter, David Buckley. Thank you, Tasha. I'm David Buckley. I'm the Standards Development Lead responsible for the Electronic Data Interchange Standards Maintenance Group. So that's the group responsible for all the EDI standards, such as XML and ENCOM. It really is the backbone for the B2B uh, communications around order to cash, so order, invoice, dispatch, and many, many more messages. Some of the recent work, um, a lot has been around semantics. You're going to hear more about semantics from my colleague Pierre Giorgio shortly. Uh, we also have a complete new release of the XML messages, release 3.5. And we're focusing on the next meeting a little bit around um, some more strategic ideas, such as using blockchain for some transactional messages. The next steps. So we're going to meet on Wednesday, the 26th, uh, midday. Uh, Central European time. There will be an overview of semantics, a lot of work, of detailed work around code lists. Code lists are essential for EDI, but also used in many other share standards, not just those of GS1, but by other organizations such as UNCPEC as well. Um, we'll be looking to update the policy, seeing what we can do to harmonize and make sure we move forward together. Spoken about blockchain and EDI, that will be a, a discovery discussion, and then talk about both the EMCOM survey and a snapshot of the survey of the usage of EDI standards around the world. Coming up next is me. I'm also the standards development lead for this uh, great group on images, digital and electronic assets. Um, as you all know, with the COVID situation, there has been an explosion of online shopping and therefore the use of 
digital assets online, such as product images. And that's what this group is, is really all about. Um, we spent about a year working on the latest release of the product image specification standard. It's been published as HTML. We've worked on simplifying a number of the examples and improving the layout and the flow. The meeting itself this week will take place on the Thursday. Uh, again, it's midday Central European, which is 6 a.m. Eastern Seaboard time. We aim to take a more strategic look at uh, some topics. So what we're going to focus on is 3D images and digital twins, something that we don't have many standards about right now, but it's something that's coming along more and more. Metadata associated with images. So what you can associate it, so you can improve search, finding, etc. cetera. Um, product image sharing and delivery. The existing standard has really been around storage and the community is really saying we need to provide some guidance around sharing and delivery of image standards. Driving adoption and eliminating uh, divergences is always a hot topic with NGS1 and we'll be spending a bit of our time on the call there. So as promised earlier, up next is Pierre Georges. Thank you, David, and welcome, everyone. My name is Pier Giorgio Licciardello, and I'm the leader of the EDI Semantic Methodology subteam, an EDI SMG subteam focused on the creation of a semantic methodology for EDI standards definition and maintenance, with the goal of providing syntax neutral business language data definition and semantic modeling of processes, allowing the users and industry to switch in a seamless way from a syntax to another and from a technology to another without the need of disrupt their investment and being open toward the future. The recent successes of the team are the publication of the first release of the semantic methodology, providing rules for data definition and semantic modeling of processes. Another development has been the proof of concept on a new transaction digital receipt based on a new technology, API and JSON-LD for data modeling. The next steps for the group will be the release of a complete set of models for the main messages of order to cache process and the mapping on the most common just one supported syntaxes, just one XML, ANCOM and UNCFAT cross industry XML. Also, a mapping on two important external data models will be provided the European SEN and UNCFAT core component library. In the end, a support will be provided for transaction definition on API and JSON technology. I will be happy to have all of you in the next meeting of the group. And now I leave the floor to the next presenter, who is Eileen Harpel. Over to you, Eileen. Thanks, Pierre Giorgio. I'm Eileen Harpel, the Standards Development Lead for the Global Product Classification SMG. Global trading partners use the GPC standard to group products in the same way, everywhere in the world, resulting in a common business language that is clear and understandable. The building block of GPC is a product code known as a brick. There are bricks for everything from a car to a bottle of milk. The highest level of classification is a segment, which is defined as a particular industry. For example, a bottle of milk belongs to the food, beverages, and tobacco segment. GPC publishes two updates each year, one in May and the other in November. The May 2021 publication is currently in the final step of GSMP and will be published in June. 25 countries have translated the GPC standard into their own language. And in Egypt, the tax authority uses the GPC for regulations. And finally, I'd like to invite you to join me in the GPC team on Thursday, the 27th of May, 1445 CET, to hear from industry representatives and GS1 member organizations to find out how they use GPC and what works well for them and what could be improved. 
Also discover more about the new GPC online tool with simplified translation functionality and discuss opportunities for the modernization or simplification of GPC specifically for use in the GS1 registry platform and verified by GS1. Thanks for your time. Back to you, Robert. Thanks, Eileen. Uh, and thank you to all the session leaders. We've got a very busy few days ahead and, and I can't wait to see what we create. Well, okay, hello again. Uh, around this time last year, I had the opportunity to talk at this event. It was GS1's first global event that was 100% virtual. And at that event last year, uh, I spoke of the pandemic as the cause of a global supply network stress test that we failed globally. We faced struggles with personal protective equipment, uh, with devices like respirators, with food supply, with household goods, electronics, e even webcams. And now a year later, uh, shortages have persisted around the world for, for more than a year. Only now there are things like lumber and microchips and fuel and even ketchup packets. Now, some of you might remember me talking a lot about digital transformation uh, in that speech. I, I talked about four themes, uh, preparation, resilience, sustainability, and flexibility. And these four themes were, at least according to me one year ago, the core of what we needed to foco focus on if we wanted to emerge from this pandemic in a way that could allow all our companies to better answer a couple really important questions. Questions like, how can we prepare better for the next global disruption? What can we do to help improve supply chain resilience? What can we do to reopen and to return in a way that's more sustainable and that respects the environment? And how can we be more flexible into the future? I still think these themes and these questions speak to what we as the GS1 community need to be thinking about as we continue the work of ensuring that the GS1 system can most effectively empower industry's digital transformation. I think these questions are important to be asking in all the work that we do in all the standards that we develop. Having that context of this last year in the front of our minds is essential. And over the last year, I, I also tried to take my own advice. Asking these same questions internally was a strong driver for us to be able to reflect on our global priorities and ensure that they were fit for purpose. And so as the result, and as I mentioned earlier in our, our session, uh, the results five priorities that GS1 is focused on globally as we look ahead to a, a slow shift back into a uh, post-pandemic world. <clears throat> the first one was supporting post-COVID-19 industry priorities uh, with optimized operations. Then there was doubling down on identification projects and focusing on GTIN integrity and ubiquity, rolling out quality data sharing initiatives, continuing to strengthen our competencies and our culture, and of course, the global migration to 2D, which represents a whole new dimension in barcoding. I'd like to share a little bit more about each of these uh, with you in the next few minutes and uh, dive a little deeper on that last one because it's so relevant to what we do here in Standards Week. So the first one, Supporting post-COVID-19 industry priorities with optimized global office operations. What does that mean? We're going to continue GS1's focus on use cases that have been prioritized by industry communities recently. And here at Global Office, that means we're gonna to work to help our member organizations engage with credibility, engage consistently uh, across this rapidly changing landscape. Some of our focus areas are of course in healthcare, all aspects of the COVID-19 supply chain, whether that's vaccines or personal protective equipment. Number two, focusing on pri uh, product identification for e-commerce and marketplaces. Uh, the shift that we saw over the last year of small and medium businesses getting online and selling more through marketplaces and e-commerce uh, has also been uh, mirrored against a hugely changing regulatory landscape. We need to address both of those, however GS1 can help. Number three, enabling consumer transparency and making sure our standards, services, and education can help process efficiencies for all those industries that we serve. Again, flexibility and resilience. And then driving the sustainability and, and circular economy agenda, primarily in the next year by leveraging work that's happening across our federation in different parts of the world. Uh, for GS1, moving from physical to virtual in all of our activities has been a challenge, but it's also been a huge opportunity to reinvent how we work and to, to really reach more people while helping industry save costs. Number two, 
<clears throat> double down on identification projects to achieve GTIN integrity and ubiquity. Some of our services verified by GS1 as a solution and our activate tools have been uh, largely influential over the last year where we saw deployment of both across many different country organizations. These programs are intended to achieve GTIN integrity, uh, high quality GTIN records, and ubiquity, the idea that every product should have a GTIN. Uh, and we're executing through a number of projects that are all tied together. One is improving the global coverage of the registry platform, its data completeness, as well as the quality of the data inside. Uh, number two, enabling more of the country organizations to activate and, and, and verify GTINs with industry across retail categories, online and offline, food and non-food. We're working in the coming year to expand the scope of the registries that we have to include locations and entities through the addition of a GLN registry. <clears throat> and we're also bringing to life the enhancement of our registries to include links to other sources of data. At GS1, since we're a federation, this means doing two things simultaneously. On one side, we're working with the Federation to raise the tide of increased capabilities for all 115 country organizations that we have around the world. And on the other side, we're trying to run fast with, with some, of, uh, some industry and some organizations that have an appetite for running further into the future a little more quickly. And of course, partnering with our marketplace community, we're working on standards, education, and services uh, that'll help the GS1 be, system be most relevant in digital commerce while ensuring that the value proposition for the GS1 system in the physical world of commerce remains just as strong as it is. And of course, we, we remain dedicated to significant resource investment to further our ambitious agendas in healthcare and in retail. Number three, rolling out quality data sharing initiatives. Data quality has become one of the largest challenges for e-commerce, for healthcare, and for digital transformation uh, across all the industries we serve. It's top of mind, and it's on CEOs' agendas all over the world. So what are we doing about it? For food and near food, we're continuing to roll out three key programs that support quality product data sharing. The global data model, our data quality strategy, and of course, the global data synchronization network, or GDSN. We're also planning to extend to specific non-food categories when industry communities are ready to commit. We're continuing our work in EDI and around semantics and traceability data sharing. Uh, and last, and certainly not least, we're progressively starting to leverage more and more the potential of GS1 Digital Link and this idea of extending verified by GS1 to unlock new data sharing opportunities. Number four, it's a little more internal. Uh, continue to strengthen our competencies and our culture. Um, we have a mandate to achieve and, and succeed in a collaborative culture that's in service of our users. Uh, it's more important than ever that we, we get that right and we continue to reinforce collaboration, reinforce trust. <clears throat> the last year has been tough, I think, for all of us, but it's our ability to trust in each other and to trust in this federation that's, that's gotten us this far. Now, the last of the five priorities, a new dimension in barcodes, what we're calling the global migration to 2D. Um, back in the early 1970s, a retail industry committee came together to develop and adopt the universal product code. You know it as the UPC, later became the GTIN, uh, as the standard way to identify products globally. And today for scanning a point of sale in any retail establishment you go to, wherever you are in the world, industry still relies on that GTIN encoded in an EAN or in a UPC linear barcode. And that legacy continues to give consumers, retailers, and brands confidence that the barcode printed on pack can be scanned at any retail checkout globally. But in recent years, and especially accelerated by the pandemic, all around the world, this idea of digital transformation has exponentially accelerated consumer requirements for access to more and useful data. And as a result, the number of barcodes on PACs have significantly increased and continued to increase. It's continued to cause confusion with consumers. It wastes precious label space. And most every one of those barcodes that are on PACs serves one purpose. 
So what do we do? To respond to the needs of consumers in an efficient and effective way, we've got to accelerate toward a future that lets fewer codes do far more things. The technology is there. Today barcodes, specifically QR codes with digital link inside, or GS1 data matrix codes, also with more data than just the GTIN inside, they can do a lot more than we dreamed of 50 years ago. It is possible today for a barcode to connect a consumer to a marketing web page and also to go beep at a checkout. It's possible for that very same barcode to alert a cashier and the consumer that a scanned product is near its expiry date. It's also possible to scan that exact same barcode and get connected to traceability or provenance information or information about how to recycle the product, where to return it, how to use it, or a myriad of other types of information. Indeed, one scan of a barcode will be able to connect consumers and every actor in the supply chain to information that they need to serve a variety of their own use cases, all from one simple code. The global adoption of 2D barcodes, codes that contain more information than just the GTIN, is going to and is already unlocking incredible opportunities for efficiencies, for new capabilities, and yes, of course, for engagement with consumers. Unlike the legacy barcodes that have served us for 50 years, but which have primarily served a retailer efficiency of going beep, these 2D barcodes have a real and clear value proposition for everyone, from the manufacturers to the retailers, to logistics providers, to the entire solution partner community that serves industry, and of course, to customers. We've learned a lot uh, at GS1 from the last years. We've already gone on this journey of migration to two-dimensional, more capable codes across the healthcare industry. And we're looking forward to leveraging those learnings in this work. So what's the opportunity in front of us? The retail industry must align on consumer engagement as the primary and common catalyst for change. Consumers expect accurate, actionable, and easily available data about the products that they search for or buy or consume or use. I've already mentioned the technology is ready. The barcodes are in our standards. Digital link syntax exists. We now have to bring together the application standards to unlock the future for everyone. The opportunity now is for us to lead the way into the future, to all work together, to provide a common vision, a common industry direction for investment, ways to eliminate divergence, and accelerate into the future together, just like our peers did 50 years ago. What will it get us? For consumers, it'll provide them with experience, personalization, uh, what they desire from a trusted source. Uh, not only will it allow the product to be differentiated, but it'll also help to meet other basic needs. Uh, understanding expiry date, information on how to use a product, recipes, provenance, traceability, just about anything. And for retailers, it'll increase consumer engagement and enhance their capabilities for product safety, quality, inventory management, even workforce engagement. And for brand owners, it's a direct engagement link to the ultimate purchaser of your product, which is something that legacy barcodes were never able to offer in an efficient manner. What's the result? Increase in consumer engagement from manufacturer to consumer while still giving the retailer a value proposition right in the middle. That's game changing. And of course, all of this is going to require that systems be optimized, systems be upgraded, some systems be advanced, some backend systems be recoded and rewritten. That's going to require investment, investment with and in the community of solution providers that, that are in and around our orbit. Aligning across the solution provider community on the ways to unlock the future making sure we're all implementing systems that are interoperable with each other and standards-based is the opportunity for the solution provider community. So what are we doing next? We're working with industry to align on this ambitious goal. Go from legacy barcode reading at point of sale uh, to being inclusive of more capable 2D codes on pack with a goal of having retail POS scanners capable of reading and processing the traditional codes and the new barcodes by 2027. If you're out there in industry, or if you're part of our GS1 Federation engaging with industry locally, what do we need companies to do? 
First, they need to assign a senior leader for the topic in their organizations. This is going to have cross-functional impact and having a senior leader involved is essential. Get engaged in the GS1 work to ensure that industry alignment is there, but also to work not in this standards week, but certainly in our next one, to create the global standards and guidelines we need to move the industry forward in a systematic way. Look out for the call to action in the next weeks. It's coming. Third, have your senior leaders express their commitment to this program to your solution providers so that they can invest in technology development with confidence. Fourth, encourage your senior leaders to be visible champions of the work, in fact, to lead us into the future. And last, I'm going to turn this over to Andrew, but right after Andrew closes out the session, he's going to share a video, uh, it's a seven minute video that talks about a history of 50 years and the opportunity into the future. I hope you take the time to watch the video. And once you do, I hope you take the opportunity to share that video broadly. It paints a vision of what the future can be, and uh, it's a pretty bright one. Thank you again to all of you. Uh, thank you for being a part of GS1, uh, for being part of our standards development work, and really being a part of our family. Uh, be safe out there. And back to you, Andrew, for, for our closing. Thanks. Thank you, Robert. That taste of the future here at GS1. Now that you've heard about the sessions for this week, you may have seen a group that you want to join. You can use the time now to sign up. Since most of the sessions are working standards development meetings, you need to specifically join the group, which you can do via a link in the description for the specific session. Also, your feedback is appreciated. So be certain to fill out your session and post event surveys. It's your feedback that shapes how we run these virtual events and will directly affect what we change and what we keep for the next one. Also, you'll be entered to win a 100 euro gift certificate for each survey that you fill out. Now, Robert mentioned, after we're done, we'll be playing a short video that recounts the history of the global trade item number. It's a standard that set the foundation for GS1. It's amazing that it was just over 50 years ago, the industry came together to create the G10, and then only a few years later, it was scanned for the first time. Stay right here to enjoy that video. But before we go there, I'd also like to thank you for your commitment to working together with GSMP and your colleagues from around the world to solve real world problems that are common across the world. It's true that without you and your hard work, there would be no GS1 standards. So with that, have a great week. Let's go to work.